painting feathers is easier than you think and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. Now you can totally watch only this one specific video if all you care about is how to paint feathers, but I do want to mention that it is part of a complete digital art course designed as a month-long 100% free YouTube series. So if you want to take on the challenge of improving your art skills, make sure to check the course details on my website and make sure to subscribe as well as ring the bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming lessons. So obviously here, if you're painting feathers for an illustration they already have, that's where you would paint them. Otherwise, make sure to go ahead and create a canvas that is big enough so you have room to zoom in and not have everything be pixelated. But if it's just for practicing, it doesn't need to be a super big canvas either. So for friends, for example, these are the dimensions that I will be using. It's literally just the size of the iPad screen, so nothing crazy here. One more thing you might want to do if you're just practicing is to set your background to a neutral gray. And what that does is it really allows you to focus on the texture and the contrast within that texture as opposed to having some sort of distraction in the background. And just, you know, if you're painting on white or black, then that kind of distorts your perception of the colors that you're painting on top of that. So just using a neutral gray for texture practicing is really good. We're going to start with a just base silhouette. So here you can do, if it was like on a bird or something like that, you would have your bird shape or the wing or whatever. For practicing, I'm just gonna go with a sphere. And here you can use the most basic brush you have in your software. So in Procreate, that would be the hard brush and the airbrushing panel. So basically we just want a round brush that doesn't have the texture or feathering or anything like that. And you can draw whatever shape again you want to use as your base. So here for practicing, I'm gonna go with a circle to turn it into a sphere or lighter. But yeah, whatever you want to work on is totally fine. So once you have your base silhouette, go ahead and create a new layer. We name it to sketch. We're kind of going to use the sketch as the shadows later, but for now we can name it to sketch. Honestly, it doesn't really matter that much. And all we're going to do at this stage is start mapping out where the feathers are going to be. And later we're going to blend this kind of rough placement and use that as a shadow so it's kind of a two-in-one that way it's just much quicker than doing it in two separate steps so for the sketch all you have to do really is pick a darker version of the color you use for your base so here i used a blue so i'm just going to go with a darker blue and by the way if you want to download my color palette as usual it is linked in the description below it's totally free but here it's pretty simple you just pick a darker version of your base color and what you might want to do at this stage is just start with some horizontal lines that are slightly curved to follow the shape of, of your base. So here it's a sphere, so it's, you know, curved along the sphere. And those are going to be marking the different kinds of feathers. So depending on when you're painting your feathers, not when, where you're painting your feathers, you're going to get different kinds. So just look at a picture of a bird, for, for example, and you're going to see what I mean. If you look at the wing, the feathers are quite different if you look at the bottom part of the wing and the top part of the wing that connects with the body. So the bottom part of the wing tends to have really long, super defined feathers. And then the closer you get towards the body, the shorter and denser, I guess, and rounder the feathers tend to be. So you can really play here with different kinds of shapes. So I'm going to pretend that this sphere is a wing, <laughs> like a wing sphere, if that makes sense any sense at all which means the feathers at the bottom are going to be longer and more separated towards the bottom and then the closer i get towards the top of the sphere which would be i guess the shoulder of the bird that makes no sense sorry i'm really not super good in bird anatomy i guess <laughs> but the feathers are going to get rounder closer together smaller and fluffier so almost like dawn i know it's not dawn because dawn is under the feathers but you, you get the point so you can experiment with that or just draw one type of feather. It really depends on what your your goal is in the painting. But basically here at this stage, you're just roughly mapping out where the feathers are going to be. And that's really not harder than that. Oh. 
Awesome! So once you have a super rough sketch, you can see it really doesn't need to be pretty at this stage, you can go back and fill in or add any color that you need. For example, here at the bottom, my feathers are too long and too pointy for the sphere. So you can just go back and make sure that your base encompasses all the feathers. So you want a complete silhouette with everything in. So just going back with the base color on the base layer with your hard brush still, just outlining everything and then filling in the shape so you have all your feathers on the base. And here make sure to take all the time you need to have a really clean nice silhouette because that's super important. If you don't have a silhouette that you like, it's going to be hard to work on the texture in the next step. So for now, feel free to pause the video. I'm going to keep mine rolling in the background, but I'm going to speed it up and we're going to meet in the next step where we're going to start working on the texture itself. But yeah, make sure you have a really nice clean silhouette here. Great, so at this stage, if you do have clipping mask available in your software, you might want to apply the sketch as a clipping mask. So in Procreate, you just tap on the menu, uh, on the layer to open the menu and then select clipping mask. And what it does basically is just the sketch is going to stay within the base shape. If you don't have clipping masks, don't worry about it. You can always use the eraser and go out and just kind of clean it up. But if that's the case, don't worry about that for now. We're going to do it later. Once we start adding the shadows, we're going to do it all at once just to save time. So what we're going to do at this stage is actually use this sketch layer for the shadows. So it's going to be the base we use for the shadows. If you want, you can rename the layer to shadows, but it doesn't really matter. And you're going to go back to a darker version of your base color. And at this stage, you might want to shift to a brush that has a bit of feathering. So still a round brush with no texture, but with feathering. And Procreate, that could be the medium brush or the soft brush. And here, all we're going to do is start adding a little bit of shading between the different feathers. So we're not going to shade in regards to the light source or anything. That's really not what we're doing now. We're not really working on the volume of the whole piece. We're just adding volume to the feathers themselves so they don't look like just one big bunch. And that's quite easy. Honestly, you just go back and reinforce the sketch lines that you already have. I personally like to not add a whole lot of shadows between individual feathers. I much more prefer to add shadows between different layers of feathers. So for example here, you can see between each individual big long feather, there's not a whole lot of shading there, but there is a lot of shading, shading, <laughs> shading happening between the medium feathers and the big feathers. So basically every time you have a layer of feather, you're going to add your shading there and kind of adding it in a triangle or shape. So it's really hard to explain with words, but if you look at a video, I'm sure you're going to understand what I mean. And once more here, it doesn't need to be clean and precise. We're going to use the blending tool later blending tune blending tool i cannot speak today guys i'm so sorry about that <laughs> but yeah it's just using the blending tool later to blend in the shadows so for now you can just quickly place them roughly map them out and that's more than good enough so you're essentially looking for something like that so you can see nothing fancy at all at this stage once you do have your shadows mapped out though, you can go ahead and use the smudge tool, which is usually a little finger icon like this, and set it to some brush that has a bit of grit to it. In Procreate, one brush that is really good for that would be the sucker brush in the painting panel. Otherwise, try to find something that has like charcoal or some something similar in the, in the name. And if it's not available to you, just go ahead and stick with an airbrushing brush that has a bit of feathering to it, like the medium brush or something like that. But here I'm gonna use the stucco brush. And what we're going to do at this stage is blend the shadows to blend them in first so they don't look as crazy as they do right now, but also using them to create the base of our texture. So the first thing to look at right now is within one row of feathers, so same kind of feather, oh, how are the feathers overlapping each other? Here, for example, the feather that is on the right is always going to be overlapping the feather on the left. So to showcase that, we are going to create the texture of the edge of the feather, which is kind of not hairy because it's not hair, it's a feather, but we're going to show the texture of the individual little parts of the feather. There's a name for that. Let me Google it. I'll, I'll be back in a second. Okay, they're called barbs. <laughs> so the little feather hairs, which are barbs, we want to show them. So what we're going to do is we're with the smudge tool going to drag the shadow towards the inner part of the feather on one direction. And then the other part, which is essentially a cast shadow, this one we're going to blend it 
so that it follows the direction of the feather. So I'm going to do an example here on the screen, make sure to pick at, pick at what I'm doing, but basically the part of the feather that is overlapping another feather, you're going to drag your shadow outwards, so towards the middle of the feather. And then the other side of the shadow, you're going to blend it following the direction of the feather because this one is a cast shadow, it's not the barbs. So we're going to do that on all the big precise feathers and it's going to be a different technique for the medium feathers. So I'm going to show that to you next. But essentially, yeah, just go over all your big feathers and just dragging one side of the shadow always the same side towards the middle of the feather. And then the other side of the shadow, always the same other side, you're going to blend following the direction of the feather. So you're going to get that way a very rough start to the texture, which we're going to mark on and just add on to later. So that's the basic technique for long, precise feathers. Well, the start of the basic technique. It's going to be slightly different, but pretty similar for medium to short, fluffy feathers. But instead of just, you know, bringing the shadow from one side, we're going to bring it from the bottom part of the shadow, the shadow, the bottom part of the feather towards the top of the feather. So you're going to see instead, of, it's almost going to look like fur at this stage, but different clumps of round fur. So feathers, basically. <laughs> So yeah, same thing, you just use the smudge tool to bring your shadow, but this time from the bottom to the top as opposed to one side to the middle and then just along the feather. So super quick, not super complicated, but that's really the building blocks of the texture for the feathers. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this fun video, please leave a comment below telling me what you're painting feathers on. So is it a sphere or is it a specific kind of bird? So just let me know, I'm really curious. And if you're new on the channel, you might be like, what's the secret password? Like, what is that all about? It's a game that we play. I hide a word some point in all my videos and it's for you guys to find and comment. And that does a few things. Not only is it fun, um, <laughs> at least that's what people say it is, but it also gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and paste my videos better which helps me to create better tutorials for you guys so that's already a win-win but it's also really cool because you guys know me you see my face in the intro you hear my voice throughout the entire video but i have no idea who you guys are and whenever you leave a comment whatever the comment is i get to see sometimes your face sometimes your name and yeah it's just really cool to see who's part of the creative community that we're building here on this channel so just leave a comment with whichever thing <laughs> you're painting feathers on and then we're going to keep going we're going to start adding a little bit more of the texture to the edge of the feathers themselves so to do that we're basically going to be using the same technique so using the smudge tool to create some texture but instead of doing it on the shadows we're going to do it on the base shape itself and so you're just going to start from the outside edge of your long precise feathers if you have them and you're going to do that texture adding situation on the same edge of the feathers that you blended these shadows so you're going to see here on the example it's not super complicated but it's really going to make a big difference and just a quick note here if your smudge tool is not a textured brush like the stucco brush for example or a charcoal brush you're not going to get as many details in each stroke so to compensate for that you're just going to have to make your smudge tool much smaller and draw a bunch of little strokes it's going to be pretty much the same effect it's just going to take a little bit longer Awesome. So that's a pretty good feather base, but it looks really flat and boring. So we're going to add some lights to make it pop a little bit more. So for that, you can create a new layer above your shadows, apply it as a clipping mask if that's available to you. Otherwise, just draw and erase as needed. And we're going to go with, you guessed it, since it's light, just a lighter version of our base color. Here for the brush, you can stick with the medium brush or any basic brush you have. And we are going to paint the light differently depending on whether it's on long precise feathers or short fluffy feather. So it's just going to be a line kind of in the middle of the long feathers. And you can see it doesn't touch the top because the top is kind of covered with the other row of feathers. So it's a little bit in the shadow. So you can just draw really quickly like that. Now for the medium to short fluffy feathers, you can just draw a little bit of a blob towards the bottom part of the feather. It doesn't need to be precise. You probably guessed it. We're going to use the smudge tool anyway. So 
You can just roughly map out the lights for now. And once you're happy with the rough, very rough, as you can see, placement of your lights, just go back in with your smudge tool. Again, if you have a smudge tool that has some texture to it, that's better. Otherwise, just use a smaller version of airbrush and do a bunch of small strokes. And here, you're going to want to follow the direction of the barbs. So, um, basically the same angle. But this time, instead of being in just one direction, it's going to create this kind of a V or inverted V shape. So just look at the video you're going to understand, but you, you know what a feather is like, you know, each side, the barbs are kind of facing away from each other slightly in an angle. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm explaining that. You, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> so you're just going to blend your, your lights that way, and that way you can keep building your texture so, 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 so much more. Now, this is way too intense though. So don't worry, once we're done blending, we're going to play with the opacity of the layers so it doesn't look quite as crazy as it does right now. That being said, if you do like that look, totally okay. You could keep it as, um, as it is right now as well. That's, you know, totally, totally fine. And just like with the shadows, you're going to blend the lights on the short, medium, fluffy feathers, just following the direction of the feather itself. So kind of like fur, but barbs. <laughs> And with everything blended in, don't hesitate, like I was saying, to go back to your layer panel to play with the opacity of this layer. I personally like to have it quite pale, and then you can go back and maybe refine some of the strokes. You don't want your feathers to look completely crazy feathery either. Um, fluffy either. <laughs> you don't want them to be too textured, basically, because you want it to look like feathers, but if you look at a real feather, like a real bird, feather, there's not that much contrast within the different little barbs. So, you know, don't overdo it digitally either. And if you want here, you could totally go back with an even lighter version of your base color and just had some tiny, tiny highlights on some of the feathers. So not all of the feathers, really just the ones that are in the area of your light source, basically. So here I'm pretending that my light source is on the top right, so the feathers that are towards the right are gonna have a little bit of highlight. And you can go back with the smudge tool, exact same technique to smudge those highlights in. Awesome, so at this point we've drawn some shadows and some lights, but mostly focusing on the volume of the feathers, like the individual feathers. But the whole piece itself looked quite flat, so we're going to add some global shadows and lights. So for that, create a new layer above everything, rename it to global shadows or main shadows, whatever you're going to remember. And for this one, we're going to use the blending mode linear burn or multiply, you can pick, and you can lower the opacity around 50% for now. If clipping mask is available to you, you would activate that. And here you can pick whatever color you want for your shadows, but I just recommend you try avoiding a neutral gray or black color because that's going to make your shadows look muddy. I always add a little bit of tint to my shadows, so here I'm going with kind of a, a lilac, I guess. And you can then just brush your shadow on this side opposite to your light source. So again, like I was saying, I'm pretending my light source here is on the top right. So my shadows are going to be focused on the left side of my sphere. <laughs> so you can place them really quickly, then use the smudge tool, blend them in. And same thing with the lights, just creating a new layer above everything, renaming it to global lights, applying it as a clipping mask if it's available to you. And here you could use the blending mode add, uh, lowering the opacity quite a lot though because add is very very strong and picking any color you want uh, for your lights. I like to go with a super bright yellow orange color because that looks like the sun but whatever you want and then you could blend in your lights using this much tool. Now here when I look at what my camera filmed on the screen the lights look absolutely absolutely terrible. So if that's the same thing that happens to you, feel free to experiment with different blending modes. It might not be add that look the best for you. And also feel free to experiment putting this global lights layer under your feather shadow. So right above the base, that might look better because right now it looks absolutely, absolutely disgusting. So <laughs> might need some experimentation there. 
One more thing you might want to do is add some patterns on your feather. It's really rare that a feather is just one solid color. So you could create a new layer, apply it as a clipping mask as well, and put it honestly wherever you want. That depends on the pattern you want. So you could put it below the shadow, above the shadow, you know, you, you wouldn't need to experiment with that. And here you might want to pick a brush that is a bit more of a grit, that has a bit more of a grit to it. So a pencil brush like the 6B pencil from the sketching panel in Procreate or any other pencil slash charcoal brush you have in your software would work well that, with, with that. And you can pick any color you want depending on the pattern you want to create and draw any shape you want, again, depending on the pattern you want to create. Here I'm just going with random little dots with doesn't make a whole lot of sense but I think it looks good I like it so I'm doing that and it takes two seconds and a half but it adds some texture to the feather some design not design some patterns to the, to the feather to make it look a bit more interesting than just a flat blue gray feather so you could do that with multiple colors multiple types of pattern it could be the bottom of the feather is a different color the top the side well you, you get the point and you can also play with the opacity of that patterns layer so it blends in a bit better with the rest of your piece So now that we've looked at the main key elements of how to draw feathers, let's talk about the things you need to keep in mind when drawing them in context, whether it's with a reference picture or not. Now, if you're watching this video as part of the full course, now is the time where you can pause and come back tomorrow for day two of the feather study, where you're going to practice the same texture, the same technique, but this time using a reference picture instead of just the sphere. Otherwise, make sure you keep watching because these tips can really make a big difference in the final result of your artwork. When you're painting feathers, there are a few specific questions you need to ask yourself to make sure they look right for your piece. So on top of thinking about the regular coloring and shading considerations, thinking about stuff like the type of bird, you know, is absolutely essential because it's going to affect pretty much everything. So a few questions you might ask yourself here are things like, where are the feathers on the bird? Because we saw it earlier in the video, uh, feathers change a lot within one Oh, like just one animal. So from tiny and fluffy feathers to long, shiny and precise. You might also ask yourself how old is the animal you're drawing? Maybe your creature is too young to have some types of feather yet or maybe it's so old that some of the usually clean and precise feather are getting a little bit messy. So the key here is to keep those questions in mind when creating your own piece or drawing from a reference picture so that you can adjust the basic feather painting technique to the creature you are working on. Another tip is also to focus only on the key parts of the animal instead of drawing precise feathers everywhere, <laughs> which would not only take a long, long time, but it can also make your piece look just overwhelming. And if you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to paint more textures and materials like fur, I highly recommend you check out this playlist in which I'm going to teach you exactly that. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.